When my father looked at the gold coin in the blacksmith's hand, I imagine all he saw were new boots and a patched roof. He called me downstairs and explained to me the wager. I looked at the gold coin. Then I looked at my father and the blacksmith and the empty whiskey glasses in front of each of them. But I didn't say anything. I simply picked up the lantern and my shawl and walked out the door towards the dead house. The dead house where they stack the bodies in the cold of the winter until the ground is soft enough to dig the graves. The dead house where the poor stay long past the thaw until there is money enough to bury them. When I got to the dead house and opened the door, it wasn't the smell of death that overcame me. It was the smell, the heat of life. The bugs, the beetles, the worms, the birds, the snakes, the rats, feasting on the death within. I walked inside and there they were, the women's bodies stacked on the right, the men's bodies stacked on the left, dry, brittle bones on the bottom, and fresh, rotting flesh on the top. I only had to get one skull. That's what the blacksmith had said. So I bent over and picked up the skull closest to my right foot, and suddenly the air was filled with a scream. No, that's my mother! So I dropped it. I picked up the skull closest to my left foot. No, that's my father! So I dropped it. And I picked up a different skull, and before the voice had a chance to cry out, I shouted, I don't care if this is your mother, your father, your sister, your best friend, or your cousin. I'm taking it, and I'm leaving. And I wheeled around, marched outside, slammed the door behind me, and locked it, just in case whatever was in there wanted to hurt me. When I put the skull on the table between the whiskey bottle and the gold coin, the blacksmith looked at we, me with enormous eyes, sputtered and stammered, but, 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 did you, that's it, did, did you hear anything? Did you hear anything? Yes, I answered. Someone did not want me to get that skull, and they were making quite a fuss after I left. And I smiled and said, good night, but I don't think he heard me, because he was racing out the door. The next morning, my father told me that the blacksmith had found the preacher on the floor of the dead house, where he would be staying for a very, very long time. I didn't feel guilty. I didn't kill him. The blacksmith killed him. My father killed him. That night, I crept up into the attic, and I got my mother's best red dress. And then in the wee hours of the morning before my father woke up, I crept into his room and I draped the dress across the rocking chair and I pushed it and set it in motion. Then I crept back downstairs and began cooking breakfast. Just a few minutes later, I heard a strangled cry from my father's room. And then I looked out the window and saw a red dress floating down through the air followed by the rocking chair where it crashed and broke into three pieces. Then my father came stumbling down the stairs and cried out, Mary! I turned around and he was white-faced, rubbing the gold coin between his fingers. I smiled with the oatmeal spoon in my hand and said, Yes, father? Nothing, he said. Never mind. And then he went out the door and began his chores. I can fix that rocking chair. My father will see it again tomorrow morning, but this time it won't be empty because my mother and I wore the exact same size dress. And perhaps my father will learn that some wagers are not worth a gold coin. <laughs>